بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Rum after beginning this uh, surah uh, with a prophecy غُلِبَتْ الرُّومِ فِي أَدْنَ الْأَرْضِ وَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ غَلَبِهِمْ سَيَغْلِبُونَ Regarding the defeat and then the eventual victory of Rome which was unexpected and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed this well before in advance. This surah begins with this miracle and this prophecy. And after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about how things have turned in a direction that people didn't expect it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assisted the Romans. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist the Muslims. And he will assist whoever he wishes. Wa'ad Allah, this is the promise of Allah. La yakhlifu Allah wa'ada. Allah doesn't break his promise. Walakin akthar al nasi la ya'lamun. But most people do not realize. Most people do not know. They don't know Allah's promises. They are unaware from the fact that Allah, he makes promises and he doesn't break them once he makes them. Then what do they know? If they don't know uh, about Allah and Allah's promises, then what, are, what do they have knowledge about? Allah says, يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِّنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا They know the apparent things of the worldly life. They know the apparent things of this worldly life. وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ غَافِرُونَ As for the hereafter, they are completely heedless. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is summing up the knowledge of human beings. All the knowledge put together that is stored in in cam- computers, that is stored in books, that is stored in e-books, that is stored in massive libraries and research centers, that is stored in the minds of scientists and, and the minds of intelligent people across the world. And so much effort, so many years, hard work and effort, tirelessly, people are working around the clock. What is, what is the net sum of all of that? ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ dunya, The apparent aspects of the worldly life. So they are unaware of the internal aspects of this dunya. Forget about knowing anything about the hereafter or having knowledge about that. Completely heedless about it. Their focus simply is on just the apparent, what, the, what meets the eye. So all the science, for example, we see every single day medicine and science, there's so much change in it. That which was regarded completely harmful 20, 30 years ago is now regarded very beneficial. That which was regarded very beneficial 20, 30 years ago, more or less, is regarded as harmful today. Things everywhere around us, we see our own physicians our, uh, will tell us that, okay, yeah, this was, this, you're not supposed to have this before. Now, actually, you should eat this, you should eat this, you should not eat this. They said, well, my grandfather or my father or myself 30 years ago, I was given different advice. Yes, but the science is changing. Right? So what happens? You have all sorts of new types of technology too. And people get excited with the use of new use of technology, whether it is an automobile, whether it is a uh, airplane, or anything of that sort, more or less. People are again very focused on the immediate benefit of that technology, and are completely unaware and oblivious of the harms that come with the package, how it's going to affect us in the long term. They're only focusing on oh, I'm able to treat this, or I'm able to go from point A to point B very quickly. Right? When, the, when the telephone was invented, when the cell phone was invented, who thought about the various problems from car accidents, train accidents, to breakups of marriages, to uh, ADHD uh, in students, to students failing, all sorts of other problems right, that are taking place. Children becoming completely cut off from their parents, don't even know who, who their parents are, living in a little virtual world. Who would have ever imagined that this is what's going to happen? And you can give many examples of that. So human beings, when they do their research, and they may do a lot, a lot of research, and come up with a conclusion, with a solution to something, at the end of the day, their hundred years worth of effort, their thousand years worth of effort, brings you to still, ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ dunya, only to the apparent aspects of the world life. They are not able to see beyond that. They're not able to see the multiple aspects of, of how this thing can turn out in the long run. They're just unaware. They don't have the ability to do so. All the satellites put together, all that research data put together, definitely is beneficial, but only short term, long term. How is this going to change the world? And how will it change me, the scientist who's developing this? We're unaware. How will it affect my own children? 
unaware. You see the person who invented the modern day computer, who, who set the, who set the uh, foundations for the modern day computer, modern day smartphone, modern day everything pretty much. What happens to him? You know, who, he couldn't even set his own life in place. And he dies miserably at home after spending time in jail and after you know, taking medications and electric shock therapy and all kinds of therapy for something which has been legalized in this country two weeks ago. This man, he went through so much suffering and hospitalization and all sorts of other problems, difficulties, because he had that problem which was regarded as a problem. They didn't look at the fact that this man is the father of pretty much all computers today. Smartphones and, and large computers and supercomputers, everything. Why don't you just give, give him the benefit of the doubt? Okay, forget whatever his, his different lifestyle, but he's doing amazing work. That was something that was regarded as, as so bad, so horrible, that it brought down his entire career. And you should see how helplessly disconnected from the world, disconnected friends, he died a miserable death. So a lot of things you can learn from that. But one thing is, um, a person who's able to achieve this so much great, great talent, and so, ma- so many great things, he wasn't even able to put bichara miskin his own life into place. That's the extent. Beyond that, they don't know how to even rectify the family, how to rectify themselves, how to become a better human being. They meaning human beings itself. We could be part of the same problem. Maybe we've done a lot for science. Maybe we've done a lot for the world, possibly, apparently speaking. But have we become a better human being? Have we realized where we're headed? And have we worked on getting answers to the questions that will be asked in the grave and on the Day of Judgment? A great number of people have not. Allah Jalla Jalalu says, وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ غَافِلُونَ Forget about knowing the deeper aspects of this dunya we life. They are completely heedless and oblivious of what happens in the Akhirah. That's why if I'm not mistaken, it was Hassan Basri rahmatullahi He said, a person today, he picks up a gold coin, silver coin, just by picking up a dirham or dinar, he can tell you the weight of it, right? Because they used to deal in that. Like people today, if you go to a jeweler, he knows his stuff in and out. You go to a car salesman, for example, he knows his stuff in and out. Everyone knows their, their specific niche, what they work with. You, give a, you go to a grocery store, just, I always think about that. I always get, you know, can't find things very quickly, for example. I say, hey, you know, I'm rushed for time, can you just tell me where can I find a loaf, uh, loaf of bread or can I, where can I find buns? You're on the other store, you'll tell you aisle four, you know, bottom shelf, right side. Okay, then you ask him, where's the box of pins? He'll tell you, you know, aisle 20, right side, you know, on, on the fourth shelf. Anything you ask him, like a person, subhanAllah, like this, like a computer is giving you answers. Say, this person, he knows this massive, uh, you know, 300,000, 200,000 square foot superstore, in and out, like the back of his hand, where a pin is placed, where's bananas, where's car oil, where's, uh, you know, uh, this uh, pillow. And just like Hassan Basri is saying, people know gold coins, silver coins, in and out. You just put them in the hand, they can tell you, silver or gold, they can tell you the weight of it. But he says, But they don't know their salah. They don't know how to improve their salah. They don't know how to improve it. They don't know how to perform it. They don't know the value of it. What is it? We're so focused on our little, uh, you know, in our little niche, in our, in our little hole, thinking that subhanAllah, we've become an, we have conquered the world by conquering our superstore, by knowing where, what is placed. And that guy for the summer job was getting paid $12 an hour. He's excited. First time. MashaAllah. I'm able to please 10 customers. I'm probably going to get a promotion to $13 an hour now or $12 an hour because I know things in and out. He's a little happy. You, you, you're looking at him and say, Berta, oh my God. You know, I hope you're able to get a good education and get yourself out of here. But he's happy because he says, now I fulfilled this goal. People ask me the questions. I know about it. That's his what we said, Choti Soch. That is his little small vision that he's got. Right? And this is how it is. Each person has got this small little vision. And they're happy and content with the worldview that they hold, in which they are fulfilling their goals. But we have to sit back and see, is this going to take them anywhere? And we are not in a position to mock and make fun of anyone, but rather introspect and look at our own lives. Are we stuck in a hole, thinking that we've achieved something great for ourselves, for our spouse, for our wife, for our kids, and that alhamdulillah we're on the way path of to success? But if someone were to ask a simple question of deen, a simple question of fiqh, a simple question of zakah or salah, that we're speechless. This becomes a huge problem. Once I had an opportunity to, uh, to lead salah in a group of extremely educated professionals, maybe 20, 30 of them, or more or less, they told me to lead and I led. I was a musafir. And after I, I completed my salah, I said, brothers in the back, please stand up and complete your prayers. And it was uh, like a fish market. So much confusion. They started talking amongst themselves. How do you go about this? This is the first time we're doing this. This is a whole bunch of things. Extremely well-educated people. But a complete loss of how to perform a salah of a musafir. 
This is what this ayah is speaking about. We have to make sure that we go beyond just the worldly life and start focusing on preparing for the akhirah. We ask Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant all of us the tawfiq to prepare for the hereafter and prepare for our death before it comes.